This week, we're analyzing Jesse Smollett and why dishonesty is completely outside of your control. It's true. It is a true fact, whether you're honest, whether you're dishonest, it's really not up to you, at least not in the moment. We want to be honest. If we need to learn how to be dishonest, we need to understand the mechanism that causes honesty. And of course, we're talking about this topic this week because of the Jesse Smollett hoax, that hate hoax crime, whatever you want to call it. And we need to understand his situation, how our situation can be his situation. Use this instance, use this ridiculous story to understand more about our psychology. And I think in understanding more about about our psychology or in understanding more about honesty and what causes honesty, we're going to invariably understand more about our psychology. Well, what happened in this story? Jesse Smollett orchestrated this hate crime against him, the supposed hate crime These two MAGA guys allegedly uh, beat him one night uh, when he was out getting a sandwich, whatever it happens to be. We're yelling all these uh, homophobic, uh, racist slurs, I think, against him. Just too perfect of a story. Here's a little uh, tip for you. If you're going to lie, make it either a really big lie or a really small lie. Nobody's going to question a huge lie or a small lie, but that's... Neither here nor there. How about we learn how to be honest? How about we learn how to be, how how to cause the mechanism, how to influence the mechanism that causes honesty? So what I'm going to say about Jesse Smollett, look, of course he's wrong. Obviously he's wrong to make up this, this hoax, to fabricate this hoax for the purpose of, I don't know, stoking racial fervor. Is that what he's trying to do? Who knows? Of course it's wrong to do. Everybody's coming out and criticizing him for doing this. That's not interesting though. Obviously it's wrong. What's interesting is we know honesty, we know dishonesty, excuse me, is wrong, yet we still do it. Not to the extent that Jesse Smollett did. I I had to rehearse his name like 50 times. I'm still not going to get it right. Not to the extent that Jesse Smollett did, but we are all still dishonest. And in fact, if we had, if we had the same psychology that Jesse Smollett had, I would submit that we would be that dishonest as well. So what is this psychology? What is the cause behind the result that is dishonesty? Well, let's look back to instances in our lives when we were dishonest. I know if I look back to instances in my life where I was dishonest, the most dishonest, I was afraid. Yeah, and I think there's some famous quotation about fear. We're dishonest about what we're afraid of. But I would say more specifically, we are dishonest about what we feel insecure about. Now, insecurity, I would say it's a type of fear. It's a type of unconscious. I'm going (laughs) to... going to make the line of consciousness or unconsciousness depending on how you feel in the moment it is it, it, so insecurity is a type of unconscious anxiety and to the extent that we have insecurity is the extent to which we will lie we won't choose to lie right what is one um, symptom of unconscious anxiety is obsessive compulsive disorder. We have obsessive thoughts, we have a compulsive disorder, and what is a compulsion? It is a behavior that we are not in control of in the moment. And you'll see this with people who have dishonesty problems, people who specifically have drug or alcohol issues, and I think Jesse Smollett has some sort of alcohol issue. He was caught with a DUI, and if you get busted for one DUI, that means you've probably done it a thousand times. So he has some sort of substance use issue. I don't know if he's an alcoholic, but some sort of substance use issue. But you'll find when people have a substance issue, they will lie and it won't even make sense. They do it automatically. It is a compulsive disorder indicating the nature of dishonesty, pathological, abnormal dishonesty. It happens 
automatically. I mean, look, it would make sense if you would lie if it would benefit you somehow. But what's really interesting about dishonesty, in fact, most dishonesty that we see is it doesn't even benefit the person. You've just been doing it for so long that it happens automatically. So let's look at the insecurity that causes the, the dishonesty. And if you don't get rid of it, not that you get rid of the insecurity, but if you don't manage the insecurity, then you will lie and it will happen automatically. I don't care what your morals are. Your morals mean nothing to the infinitely complex nature of your unconscious. This is the cause. This is the cause of the anxiety we work on this or of the dishonesty work on this and we will naturally be honest. So what is insecurity? What causes insecurity? Well, what happens here? The threats come in. Okay, insecurity, two causes. Either the threats are coming in from our environment and we are not looking at them, or we have unconscious anxiety built up from perhaps years or even decades of the threats coming in and not looking at them. So these are the two threats coming in and here we have conscious anxiety. Go check out my anxiety video. I'll link it in the description. And we need to look at the threats coming in and our unconscious anxiety, the threats we've been avoiding for a really long time. We need to bring both of these to the surface, get more, by surface I mean our, our, our conscious, get more and more comfortable feeling the anxiety. And then from there, what do we do? We confront the threat in a pro-social way, beneficial for us first and foremost, but also at least not detrimental to other people. But it all begins with awareness. It all begins with understanding our maladaptive behaviors down here, our automatic compulsive behaviors. Lying is one of them. Substance use is one of them. And in Jesse Smollett's case, some sort of persecution victim complex. Not that you can't be persecuted in certain instances, but if this is a overall view that you bring to the world, then I would submit to you that it is the result of unconscious anxiety. It feels real though, so you project it out as existence. So if you're always persecuted, if you're always the victim of existence, of whatever social order you live in, then what are you gonna do? You're going to be dishonest. So really it's about getting at the insecurity in our unconscious and how do we do that? Of course, therapy, group ther therapy predominantly. Identification is the meaning of the message. We listen to other people talk, really listen to them, really understand emotions that they are expressing and this allows us to feel our own emotions, to get in touch with what's really going on with us. Of course, we're much more likely to do that in the presence of other people, of other faces. These help, the, the faces here, this is what faces look like. They, they are, um, they're, they're gonna help us be more comfortable feeling emotions. It's just how we're built. We are social beings to some extent and this is, that's, that's what that means is we see ourselves, we see our unconscious down here by seeing ourselves in other people. We bring this all up to the surface and then we work on it in a pro-social way. You do that enough, you, you manage, you get in touch with the insecurity down here, the insecurity that causes the maladaptive behavior, and you will naturally be honest. It will simply happen. You won't have to look at it. You won't have to, to make yourself be honest. Yeah, you know. And this indicates something really important about our psychology. I mean, look, how can, at the same instance, how can mental disorder, I was about to say mental illness, let's just call it mental disorder. How could mental disorder be a real thing, yet at the same time, we have free will? How do we connect these two? Well, we connect them in two ways. One is awareness, not just awareness, but what are we aware of? We have to be aware of our emotions and how they work. And the second one is time frame. With enough awareness, with enough time frame, we can connect 
mental illness, and free will. So the difference between being in a state of mental illness, mental disorder, and choosing a way out of that are those two things. And this is something that a lot of psychologists don't understand. And I'm going to pick on Jordan Peterson because he's prominent and because I'm sure a lot of you guys like him, but he gets like, some things wrong. And the things that he gets wrong could, you know, if you don't correct these errors, these mental errors, it couldn't lead to something really bad in the future. And what does he say about honesty? He just tells you to be honest. I think that's one of the rules in his book, right? To be honest, or at least not be dishonest, of course, being excessively wordy as he is. Well, unless you manage the insecurity, I don't care how much you read whatever that rule is in his book, you're going to be dishonest. And what's more, because of the nature of insecurity, because of the nature of unconscious anxiety, it's going to happen automatically. We need to understand the cause of it. We all know what to do. We've seen Predator, right? We've seen Braveheart. We've seen Rocky. We all know what to do. That's not the point of psychology is to figure out how to do it. What's the mechanism behind doing what we know that we need to do, which is honesty. This isn't philosophy. This was a philosophy channel. I would just say, of course, be honest. But I think there is a lot more information in the psychology. And I think in understanding the psychology behind it, we don't just look at Jesse Smollett and, th and think, oh, what a bad guy. We look at that instance and we think, oh, that could be us. If I had that level of anxiety, if I had that level, level of insecurity, if threats were coming into my life that I've been avoiding for decades, I would do the same thing. And that's all for this week. Please like and subscribe. Tell a friend, talk to your friend about this. Well, I guess I didn't really need the board. Well, I guess I needed it as a distraction to point it. Okay. But tell a friend, talk about what we talked about this week. And as always, work on your insecurity so you can be honest. And we all know the ultimate point of being honest is so you don't look as stupid as Jesse Smollett.